Greetings, Initiate. We've been watching you. You're in this place only because we wanted you to be. And now is your chance to prove yourself worthy of the invitation. You can show your worth to the Demir with the Trada as your assassin and silencer. You'll have to command a deck that is able to control the board, all while spreading paranoia on the table as another creature goes silently missing in the night. With the mists and shadows on your side, your opponents will be swinging at nothing but air, trying to pin down the number one Demir assassin. So step forward and place Atrada in the command zone, ensuring your opponents are nothing but a liability as she works her way through her list. The Silencer is a 3-5 unblockable vampire assassin for two, a blue and a black. And whenever she deals combat damage to a player, we can exile a creature that player controls with a hit counter on it. If that player ever controls three cards in exile with hit counters, they lose the game. Itrata is very powerful, but she does have a downside. She also must shuffle back into the deck after she hits, and while we can always return her to the command zone, that'll increase her commander tax. We'll need to use blink and bounce effects to keep her out of the command zone and in the fight. The crux of this engine is going to be recurrable bounce and blink effects. Artifacts like Crystal Shard, Erratic Portal, and Portal of Sanctuary can bounce Atrata after her trigger, so our opponent's creatures still get the hit counter and Atrata returns to our hand safely. Creatures like Vidalkin Mastermind and Deadeye Navigator also let us keep Atrata from leaping back to the library or the command zone. The Navigator does an even better job as the blink effect means we don't have to recast Atrata from our hand. Other blink effects we run include Illusionist Stratagem, Ghostly Flicker, Displace, and Essence Flux for one-time flicker effects to save Atrata. Supplant Form does double duty by bouncing our commander and replacing her on the board with a copy. Two other important cards of note here are Helm of the Host, which allows us to make proxy Atratas that we can swing in with no consequence, and when the board is empty, it allows us to store up a critical mass of clones to knock out anyone bold enough to try to keep a creature in play. Stryonic Resonator is an artifact that allows us to copy Atrata's ability and exile two cards with one hit. Wind Zendikon also seems like an odd inclusion, but as players with two hits are not likely to cast another creature, we can make them have a creature by animating one of their lands as Atrata only cares about cards that were exiled with hit counters. The Demir are crafty and not always as they seem. We take full use of this with Transmute, allowing us to discard this card for three mana and find another card with the same CMC as the one we transmuted. Shred Memory and Muddle the Mixture allow us to find key two drops like Stryonic Resonator or Cyclonic Rift. Demir Houseguard and Clutch of the Undercity let us find our Helm of the Host or Erratic Portal, while at five mana we have Brain Spoil, which can find us Mirror Gallery, a card that will allow us to clone our commander without that pesky legend rule. Aside from transmute cards, we have normal tutors like Fabricate to find many of our key artifacts. Dark Petition, Diabolic Intent, and Beseech the Queen all allow us to tutor for any card we need in the moment. For card draw, we turn to the classic blue taxing enchantments of Mystic Remora and Ristic Study. You will go blue in the face asking that ever important question, do you want to pay one for that? The Remora can be a good little fish, as an early play can net you an additional four to five cards in the first three turns, as long as you aren't under too much pressure. Don't forget to feed your fish by paying the cumulative upkeep. Since we already have many engines in one place to bounce and blink our cards as well as copy abilities, it only makes sense to play creatures that can gain us value by casting them over and over again. Baleful Strix is a card that draws a card on entry and will allow us to keep drawing if left alone with a bounce engine. Glint Nest Crane might not always hit, but since all of our artifacts are important to our game plan, this card is a great target to blink, copy, and bounce until we found all the artifacts we can cast. Weaponcraft Enthusiast, Aboran Overlord, and Eldrazi Skyspawner allow us to generate a small token army with continued plays, and Skyspawner will even give us some ramp. Champion of Wits and Muldrifter will help us draw and loot through our deck while Solemn Simulacrum is a solid ramp spell on ETB, and even in death will give us one last card of value. Ravenous Chupacabra and Shriek Maw let us keep enemy creatures in check. Knight Incarnate is an interesting card as it only triggers on leaving the battlefield, so we can blink or bounce this card to have a reusable sweep of all small creatures, hopefully keeping decks like Tristani and Edgar in check. It is good to note that Atrata has five toughness, which will make sure she won't get swept away from the knight. The next three creatures are quite significant. Archaeomancer and Mnemonic Wall seem like a nice value engine, but they let us keep hold of our double blink spells while blinking something else. If that something else is a Peregrine Drake, we will generate infinite mana. We then end the combo, hopefully by reclaiming a tutor from our yard to find our Exsanguinate and win the game. Now the secondary plan is very important in this deck as our commander is going to warp a game to the state where people will stop casting non-token and non-commander creatures. Without creatures in play, we won't be able to get the final hits on players, so we do need another way to win in case the paranoia takes hold of the table. 
We round out the creatures with a couple of clones. Stunt Double and Identity Thief let us copy our opponent's best creatures or even double up on some of our own. We also run the very Demir Stolen Identity. This sorcery is an overcosted clone that is the possibility to keep cloning. Encoding this to just the lowly Baleful Strix will begin to get out of hand very quickly. Sometimes, despite our best efforts, Atrata might take some unscheduled trips to the Command Zone. In that case, we have a Geode Golem to break her out once the cost becomes too high. A slew of counter spells and a few board wipes with the ability to recur them will definitely cast us as the fun police of the table. Our counter magic sweep begins with classics like Swan Song, Negate, and Disallow. Supreme Will allows some utility, and Mystic Confluence will synergize with our many Enter the Battlefield creatures. Misdirection gives us some manaless protection for Atrata, or allows you to divert a big X spell or even move a key buff or aura to a less threatening target. Speaking of protection, we do play a Swiftfoot Boots to keep Atrata safe and moving quickly to her next target. In the realm of board wipes, we have three great options with Cyclonic Rift to remove every non-land card we don't currently control at instant speed. Toxic Deluge is great with the high toughness of our commander, but if an opponent has gotten out of hand, we can drop more life to make sure everything is clear for our own machinations to bloom. Finally, sometimes we need to just make sure everything is dead and even collect some cards for our trouble. Decree of Pain makes sure that we get everything and draw a card for each creature killed by the decree. Demir colors will always be behind in mana against the green decks unless we include some rocks and other acceleration. This deck does want to maintain control of the board, which will require not only mana to make our plays, but mana to cast counter spells and control spells on our opponent's turns. We run a very standard array of mana rocks with staples like Soul Ring and the new Arcane Signet, as well as Demir Signet, Talisman of Dominance, Felwar Stone, and Prismatic Lens. We run Burnished Heart as a colorless explosive vegetation that can also block for us. Also, since we play 15 basic lands, cards like Terrain Generator can help us make extra land drops with a little extra mana. The mana base in this deck is mostly focused on making sure we find land and having our colors, as this deck needs a large amount of mana to operate in the late game. You'll find all the classics for blue-black fixing, including Sunken Hollow, Fetid Pools, Watery Grave, Command Tower, Drowned Catacombs, Choked Estuary, Morphic Pool, Dark Slick Shores, and River of Tears for pure mana fixing. Temple of Deceit, Dismal Backwater, and Demir Aqueduct add a little utility in our mana fixing. Flooded Strand, Polluted Delta, and Evolving Wilds allow us to shuffle and slight deck thinning when we've started to hit our land drops. Fixing lands are the least important part of this deck, and you can add a few more basics if you don't have some of the lands listed above. However, the following utility lands are much more helpful. Buried Ruin lets us buy back a piece of our engine if it gets destroyed or countered. Bajuka Bog lets us combat the grave-based strategies that are always prevalent in Commander. Field of Ruin and Tectonic Edge allow us to deal with problematic lands. Temple of the False God gives us just a little extra mana push in the mid to late game. Needing a Reliquary Tower is a good problem to have, so endeavor to play one in case nobody feels like paying for our Ristic Studies. Eight basic lands and seven swamps finish out the 99. So if you're looking to silence your opponents, turn games on their head, or just exploit the group politics, then Atrata is the commander for you. It's a mid to high power level deck with strategies both torturous and overwhelming, so it's not for the weak hearted or those that lack mm, vision. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win. Are you? Tread carefully, player. commander okay and i really don't want to play more than one card that has a big drawback if mm -hmm. you don't have your commander doing nothing is so much better than doing something that is bad for you wow okay what's uh another mistake that you think players commonly make in commander so another common mistake that i'll run into when looking over other players decks or even kind of brewing up my own stuff is I will have too many interactive cards. And I think that that's something that a lot of players will end up doing. You'll play against someone or look at their deck and they'll have 15 counter spells. But don't we want a lot of, what What do you mean by interactive cards? And uh, when you said interactive, I'm imagining cards that work with each other or you mean like, like removal spells uh, 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 counter, things right. like that. Yeah, okay. no, that's, that's not, good... sy not synergistic cards. Exactly. Okay. So synergistic cards are kind of your combo pieces or the things that, right. these are, these are the cogs in your well-oiled machine. Yes. Right? Yes. So we don't um, mean that. Exactly. I'm talking about the card counter spell, swords to plowshares, red elemental blast, 
Crozen Grip, that kind sure. of thing. These are your interactive things that are good to have, 